Hi, and welcome to another Tom Ray's Art Podcast. I'm Tom. On today's show, we have a subject that is actually kind of a, I want to say, hot button, hot top, not hot topic. That's a place. Uh, it, people have different opinions about it. Let's put it that way. Uh, I am, I kind of see the validity of both. And actually the subject is generating AI art. And the person I'm talking to today is actually someone who had contacted me a while ago as a musician. They were, they were working on a new album and wanted to, they wanted to talk about it when it came out and some time had passed and uh, we hadn't really spoken to each other. And then they started working on a, creating AI art and they wanted to talk about that. And I know that a lot of people are against it. A lot of people are like, what's the big deal? Uh, we go over the opinions of both, but this isn't just a person going, make this for me. This person is literally going place by place by place on a giant image that they're generating, actually sculpting it and painting it the way that you would with Photoshop or collage, or I mean, I even might say 3D generation or, you know, stuff like that. It's, he has process videos that show it and it kind of opened my eyes to what they do and what can be done. I've seen the ones where it's like, here's a jokey prompt, do a horse with a turtle face, that sort of thing. There is that. Yes, of course. And that's fun. That's dandy. What are you going to do with it? But this is really just it, someone generating photographic images in fantasy worlds it's an interesting conversation. Um, I don't know if it's going to change anybody's mind about it, the way they feel, but it's still good to always look at both sides. I, I don't think it's good to just say, this is bad. Let's never speak of it again. So, <laughs> and their work is kind of cool. So it's a fun conversation. Here we go. Starting right now. My name is Billy Z. Duke artist, AI prompt, engineer, Photoshop artist, whatever, behind Inhuman Touch. Uh, and I am was previously the band leader of the, the Wrong Windows, which is an indie rock band. Now I am pretty much the Wrong Windows myself. Yeah. Uh, after the pandemic. So. <laughs> right. Yeah. When you, uh, you had actually contacted me on my email list before uh, about wanting to talk about your music, but you were preparing for some stuff and you were going to get back to me. And now when you had contacted me, just recently, you're like, I'm not really doing that anymore. So uh, quickly, and as, if you want to let me know what, so what happened? What what happened to well, the band? I'm still gonna, I'm still gonna do that. We have, like, we put out. I don't know. It's it's it, trying to encapsulate the story of the band. In in 2013, I had kind of a, let's say, a de facto spiritual awakening. Oh, really? Where I decided because I've been doing music my whole life, but it's always been kind of on the back burner. And okay. I've had I've been in bands in other cities that I've lived in, but I never really made it the priority to make the band the thing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just decided this was the time to do it. Uh, and so I'm like, all right, we're going to make an album. We're going to put it out on vinyl and we're going to we're going to just do it. We're going to I was just like pouring my energy into that for yeah. uh, a good seven or eight years. And we did get the album and we did put it out on vinyl. And in the midst of that, I spent like a few years, you know, driving for Lyft and being this close to homeless. And <laughs> it was a, uh, it was an adventure, okay. but the album exists and I'm proud of it. And, uh, and the band, we were continuing to play around town. And uh, my, my friend says that uh, being a band in LA is like bringing Coles to Newcastle because there's just so many talented people here and right. very hard to get anybody out. I've heard people do go later. there to try and succeed in, in some sort of entertainment business. Yes. Yes. And, and, <laughs> and I know I, I was frequently, I go to an open mic every week uh, until quite recently when, when the venue decided that the open mic was not profitable, they're not going to have music anymore, but uh, yeah, uh, they'll find a new location for that. Cause that was already the second location, but that, that was like my church. Okay. Because uh, every every week I would go and just meet a bunch of other musicians, and everybody was, you know, it, the level of talent there was insane. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's Wonder and Awe Productions. I should give them a, a shout out because they're the, the musical community here is like that. That was what I was looking for for a long time. I am curious the difference between uh, the because I've gone to open mics here in Madison, where I'm at. Also, first of all, so you are located in L.A. Is what you're saying? 
Yes, currently I live like right in the middle of Hollywood. Okay, uh, gotcha. So you really are in the heart of it. Like, yeah, that's yeah. you're in like competition central, basically. So, mm-hmm. <laughs> but okay, so the open mics and it's there, fierce, fierce. Yeah, I would bet. Like the open mics <laughs> there, they must be like here. It's like you show up, you wait your turn, all that, which I'm sure you do at the open mics there. But there's probably more. I want to say it has more pizzazz, probably. Or I'm just guessing. I'm just curious, like how much more it is of a performative stage thing than it is here where it's like people show up and maybe there's some backing stuff or somebody's just going to go, I'm going to get up on stage. Like, you know, what is the competition in the talent like there for those? I'm curious. Uh, it was interesting. Like, it, I mean, it was pretty orderly because the way it was run was like kind of very tight because a lot of people would show up and sign up. So they okay. would try to keep it, keep it rolling. Um, but it was, I, I mean, I've been to other open mics in other cities and other ones in this city. This was the only one that I ever went to more than once. And uh, and just kept going back to okay. It, it was I mean everybody was really listening to each other and uh, it, it was it was just nice. It was it was a great place to sort of uh, you know just get you know, have the catharsis of performing and 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 to get inspiration from other people and a lot of people. I mean I watched a lot of other bands form out of that community, like people mm-hmm. who. who other and in fact my last guitar player i met there yeah well so okay well i mean like any story about people who i mean going all the way back to the 60s it's like everybody it was like you know they would go to places and form a band and meet people at so that makes sense to me it's i want to say like every biography i've seen about a musician (laughs) starts out that way (laughs) right yeah it's like they were hanging out at hate ashbury or something exactly (laughs) before there was a uh starbucks at ben and jerry's (laughs) yeah and you, so you guys pressed on vinyl. Sorry. So with, uh, I do like to discuss at least the musician's side of it. Just me being oh, a musician no, I'm, I'm, as well, I'm you know, happy to talk about it all. So yeah, the, uh, <laughs> but with the vinyl, so here's the thing. And this is me asking personally, everybody wants to put their stuff on vinyl. I don't know any, I, I know like maybe a few people that buy it. Um, how was, I mean, when you guys did it on vinyl, like, did you, did you do a big pressing? Did you do a small pressing? Where did you? press it at even um we use pirates press which is uh that sounds familiar yeah there's a at the time when i was researching the options there were only around five different companies that would do like small runs of stuff right and small runs being like what 100 yeah well small runs are yeah like 50 or 100 okay uh but we did we actually made 500 of them nice uh because i was like maybe this is the only time we're going to do this so right uh and I, I still have quite a few of them actually in boxes. Well, that's what uh, I mean. We, you know, <laughs> but we did, we did sell a lot of them and I had them on sale on, online and stuff. So okay, uh, but we mostly sold them at shows and, and I would bring them to the open mic. I had this uh, merch case uh, that I got, I got tricked out with all these lights. So it looked like the mothership and close encounters. And, nice. Uh, <laughs> That was but, the, prob- uh, I, the problem I always had was setting up the the merch. I never, every time I did it, it would, it looked like, to me, it was like, it, it just looked like I threw stuff on a kitchen table. I mean, it never looked like, and you're saying you had the lights and everything you figured out. It was always the last minute thing for me. I was never able to do it. Even when I was doing pop-up shows with my comics and stuff, I'd get there and it was just like, Oh, I look, I, yeah, I, I would just look like I threw something on a table. So and you're like doing a proper yeah. setup to sell vinyl. Well, I actually made sort of a, a thing that is, it's a turntable with the album kind of disassembled. So you oh. can see all the stuff that's inside of it. Nice. And it's in between like two pieces of plexiglass and it rotates and has post-it notes all over it. Cause post-it notes are part of the album design. So okay. I use those to, to label it. Yeah, it was, it was kind of crazy. I wanted it. It's, a very maximalist approach to the design on that one. Uh, I wanted to bring in other people. So of course, even though I, you know, I am a visual artist. I had somebody else, my, my neighbor do the album covers and, uh, and my brother drew the post-it notes that are on the inside. So it's, uh, it was a little, you know, a little bit of a family affair, which I I was uh, just trying to engender at the time, the the community thing. Right. But, uh, but I mean, it was in the end, it was, it was me you know, pushing for it and making it, I get that. making it come to light. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, and it's just, it just had to happen. It's like, it must happen. Well, and you said yeah. that it was a spiritual awakening. So what was the, the spiritual awakening? What happened? Uh, I don't 
really want to get into that. Okay, no detail, problem. I, I just but, realized uh, as I was saying it, I'm like, oh, that might be kind of personal. So then, don't worry about it. Yeah, <laughs> it, it's 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 just very strange. Uh, I okay. Mean, it's, it's it's personal and and it's also it's I, I will just say it's probably not what you would expect from that uh, from that description. <laughs> gotcha. All right. <laughs> let's let's say I like uh, that as an answer as it is. It's time, very mysterious. At the time I was doing a lot of uh, psychonautic exploration. Okay. Uh, <laughs> as one does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was my that was my uh, exploring the psyche era. Okay. And uh, and that's what I found. So, <laughs> gotcha. And then you made the just recently, as you had contacted me, you made a transition into a very, I would say, in the artistic world, touchy subject, uh, which is working oh, yeah. with AI. Which is interesting because I'm on the fence. I see both sides of it. Um, I mean, when I first, here's here's my take, and this is just the way I thought when I first started seeing it. People were getting upset that like AI was just making art for them. And all I could think of was collage artists are going, and? You know, I mean, you, you know, you take <laughs> taking things and putting them together and stuff like that. And I mean that respectfully. Like it's, right. it's like, yeah, yeah. you know, and everything's built from something. And, you know, William Burroughs uh, Naked Lunch is just snipped up you know, sentences put together, all that kind of stuff. And I see the value in that. I also see the value in people going, don't steal my work. Whereas where it's taking oh, yes. it from, that is a big subject where the AI is taking the work from. But at the same time too, it's not as easy as just, I go, I want horses on a field. You know, it's, it, it, you can do more. It's, it, it does take work just like it would to manipulate things in Photoshop. And I mean, not to let's just bring up all my points first before we get to yours. When <laughs> graphic art started, that was a thing, too, is it's like people who couldn't draw were able to make pictures. And when Photoshop and Illustrator were starting to get used for things other than actually editing photos, people were very upset that this was happening. Or when hand drawn animation was being done by different types of software. I mean, it's the yeah. same sort of new thing added and, you know, build upon and. I still think talent has to come from somewhere for it to work well. Occasionally, one or two things will squeak by and get credit. But anyway, so there's my there's my big dump of how I'm still kind of undecided and I see the value of both sides. Uh, now, how did you get started with this AI stuff? What made you, I mean, like everybody, I'm sure you were like, let's see what funny thing I can make. Um, yeah, at first, <laughs> at first, exactly. That was it. It's like this... All this stuff dropped like the end of last summer, and uh, and I and I was like, oh yeah, you know, because you'd sign up and they'd give you like a few dozen free generations, and uh, I'd sit there. Now I actually have uh, my degree is in visual art, uh, painting and and sculpture and stuff like that. Where did you go? Uh, uh, Mason Gross at Rutgers in New Jersey. Nice. Okay. Uh, and I did one year uh, junior year abroad at the Slade School of Fine Art in London. Oh, was, uh, pretty wild. Yeah. Nice. Um, yeah, it was very free form over there. They basically gave you a studio and just really just let you go. Yeah. <laughs> wow. It's like a movie. Damn. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I, I was, I found like that whole experience of, of art school, like at the time, I don't know if it was just the school or the, the culture of art at the time, but it was very much about finding out why you as an artist made art to begin with and kind of deconstructing your own motivations and all this stuff. And I was expecting more of a kind of technical uh, thing where I was going to become like an apprentice to a master painter and he was going to show me, here's how you do a fresco and here's how you paint in Renaissance style or whatever. And I, I thought it was going to be all techniques. I didn't want to question why I made art right? Uh, because I just wanted to keep making it. It was like, it was not, uh, it was not incredibly important to me at the time to to stop and question why. And when I was forced to, it kind of changed my process. And so I started out just painting and drawing in a very traditional way and, and kind of uh, realist or surrealist style. And by the end, I was doing these large scale installations uh, where I would kind of build a stage set to do a performance art piece in and then tear the whole thing down afterwards. So none of it really exists anymore. Uh, but after I left school, I, I kind of had run that whole uh, gamut of of kind of stylistic 
expression and I didn't really know what to do with myself. And it's not like, you know, you graduate from school and people are like, oh, yes, uh, you, I want to buy your paintings. So I just went, entered the job market, which uh, uh, and I started learning computers and became a web developer. So not not uh, the art job market. You went to like, well, I got to work. I did work. Uh, one of my very first jobs out of college was at an art magazine in New York. Oh, OK. Uh, although I was like the circulation manager for a newsletter that went to art collectors. Uh, circulation so, again, so is that like, like selling grit like they used to advertise in comic books you were just <laughs> you were you were a glorified paper boy <laughs> i don't honestly really remember what my job was comprised of i know that eventually the thing i do remember is that eventually i started messing with the max in the office oh okay and designing and designing ads for like gallery shows because people would if they didn't have their own ad design they would say to us you know make us an ad and this is what we want it to look like yeah uh, so at that point it was like clark or whatever and that's when mm -hmm. I first started messing with the computers and I realized that I liked working on them and uh, uh, perhaps more than working with the people sometimes. <laughs> uh, and, I, you know, and, and, and that was around the time when the web was becoming a thing. So I, uh, I learned HTML and it, it went from there. Okay. Uh, I'm not sure I would take that same path again if I, if I knew what was coming or else I would I guess go to work for Amazon in like ninety nine or something. Well, I like mean, that. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Duh. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh but yeah, but I but the the uh you know, I was still again, I was I, my artistic expression throughout most of those years was was in the form of music. And then once I started messing with these AI things, uh at first it was very uh exploratory and kind of jokey. And I was also taking like ideas that I had wanted to make when I was in art school or, or had made and hadn't quite come off right. And I was trying to see if the AI would make them any better mm -hmm. or if it could get close to what I had made with the description of, of what I was trying to do. So it was just random. You know, I would think, oh, let's try this. And every now and then I'd hit it up. Yeah. Uh, and at a certain point, I got fascinated with the, the generation of imaginary people. Right. Uh, because, because, yeah, you can just say, give me a face, uh, you know, and you can describe what you want that face to look like, and it will give you four options for what that face well, looks like. And this goes to, so when you had contacted me, you sent me a link to some uh, speed videos of you creating something. And I've seen the work that you did, and I'm like, okay, I get that. Well, first of all, you know, with the AI generated thing, it's taking from real stuff, and these look like real photos that were set up to the point where I'm going like, is this the same person? Like, are these actually photographs? Is he messing with me right now? But <laughs> yeah, a lot of, uh, a lot of people that I've told about the feed, they're like, Oh, I really like the, the photography that you're doing. Lately. Right. And, or they think that at least I'm starting with a photograph and, uh, and that's not at all the case. It's all, it, I mean, there, there are occasionally stock photos employed when the, when the AI fails to generate something that I really want in that. There. I did notice. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, uh, and the hands, a lot of times if somebody's, it, 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 the current generation is supposed to fix the hands and the number of fingers and that kind of thing. Uh, but at that point, it was it was very lucky if you got a realistic looking hand. So but I would he, either have to redraw them myself or, or bring them in from something else. Yeah. And this is where watching that speed video is kind of an eye opener for what my general, you know, thinking of thinking I knew what it was like without actually seeing it, you know, just assuming this is the way it goes watching yours. It really is kind of like collage art, but also painting at the same time, because you're just, you're generating small squares and filling in what should be there. And then like you start with the face and then go like that whole process. So explain that for, I mean, I could go through and explain it, but it's your process. But watching that was fascinating because you really were building the person and the background piece by piece with little squares. So explain to me this process. Cause I was, it was fascinating to watch. Yes. This is one of the main, uh, uh, I, I don't know, features or options available in these things. So the, let me explain the, the AI art landscape. Cause a lot of people, I start talking about it and they don't know what I'm saying just cause they haven't messed with it themselves. And yeah. it's very familiar to me by this point. Uh, we have three basic uh, engines that will generate text to image. Um, we'll enter enter a text prompt. You'll get an image back of some size, and that's Dolly, which is OpenAI's software. It's proprietary. It runs on their site and only on their site. Uh, Midjourney, which is 
on you can run it on you have to join discord to run it you're basically messaging a discord server to get your images hmm. and stable diffusion which is open source and you can either run on your own machine if you have a good enough or new enough machine which i don't happen to have or you can rent servers online because people are running it all over the place in different iterations and uh and you can just subscribe to them and generate your stuff there uh so most of the ai art you will see has been generated by either Midjourney or Stable Diffusion uh, because they have, it's just, that's the one, those are the ones that people seem, the majority of people seem to gravitate to because they're very good at making like fantasy art and anime and, and just kind of stuff that people like to generate. Which, yeah, which uh, this definitely lends to very well. Yeah, and I, I gravitated to Dali because of the outpainting ability. Now, most of these, uh, Mid Journey doesn't do this, but the other two can, where you can in paint or out paint. And in painting is basically erasing part of the existing image mm -hmm. and replacing it with new AI generated content. Out painting is taking the square, moving it to the side, and get and expanding the frame of the existing image. So in painting and out painting, basically the same thing. It's just where you're putting the square. Let me let me <laughs> let me interject <laughs> to one funny thing that I saw while you were doing this. So there was one where you were. Uh, uh, I think it's probably the first one that I saw the uh, you were doing an arm from somebody that you were painting and then you were trying to extend the arm and figuring out what the arm should do. Should it be behind something? Should it be across? And so you're redoing this and it wasn't matching up right. So you erased the top of the arm. You put like a little oval uh, erasure on the on that part and then drew a square around it. And what the AI did is it kept trying to fill that part that you erased and it would find images like it would stick a head in there. There was a fish yes, like it was yes. trying to find anything that fit the shape. And I thought that was yeah. hilarious that it wasn't just extending the arm <laughs> the way that you wanted to. It was trying to fill the, <laughs> fill the, the void the with key, something. The key right there, and this is both a positive and negative aspect of the way that the software works, is that that frame, that generation frame is also the limit of the context. So whatever whatever existing image is inside that frame is the context that it will extend okay the, the ai that's, does not by the way that sounded very deep <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's 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 odd because it doesn't keep the entire image in mind so it doesn't when right. you've got that square over here and you're doing the arm it just sees that little patch of skin it could belong to any limb or whatever mm -hmm. and uh i wish there was a switch where you could kind of say hey do that or keep the, you know, use the entire image as context, because then you'd get a lot more accurate uh, things. And, and I mean, the way to do that would be to reduce the entire image to the size of the generation frame and impate the part you want. Yeah. The problem there is when you blow it back up, the resolution is going to be terrible. Oh, yeah. Uh, so th those kind of issues are things I'm dealing with all the time, Yeah. <laughs> like the resolution and, and, uh, because I, because I like to keep expanding, uh, when I'll start, like Dali will give you a megapixel image, a 1024 pixels square. Mm -hmm. uh, and the other ones, you can kind of adjust the size. And, and But Dali's like, that's just set. That's all you can do. So if I want to, at a certain point, you're going to be at that when your image gets big enough, the square is so small relative to the image that the context is relatively meaningless. And it start, it would just put garbage in every in every frame. And if that's what you're going for something really odd that's what you do but what i do is if i'm trying to keep things uh realistic is i have to you know make a larger square and then reduce it down yeah and keep, keep doing that so i end up with multiple versions of the image where it's just zooming out yeah and that's that goes back again to there's validity in both sides of like the way that you're using it you're actually spending the time putting in the effort stop start remove redo and you're building out something that looks like it would be like, like you had said, people had told you a photographer did something, then put it in Photoshop and then altered everything around them. Like the, you know, a green screen or something, and you put them in environments, but you're still creating a person that looks real and then manipulating something around them, which is very much what people have done with Photoshop and photography. And that's, that's why I'm yeah. saying like, there is, there are ways to do it where I feel like the people who use it for a joke will continue to use it for a joke, but they're not going to sell it. They're not, they're doing it so that they can get to the top of a Reddit, you know, thread and, and go look at the meme I made or something like that. You know, it's, and, right. and I feel like you're doing more than that. The, the time and effort that you spend 
working on one piece alone shows that it can be, I want to say it can be used for good. Um, <laughs> well, I've, I've had these discussions online because I've been posting these uh, in various places and they kind of cascade to my Facebook yeah. where a bunch of my friends are looking at it and, and they have different reactions and some of them are, you know, creatives themselves and they're very afraid of what AI is going to do to the job market. Oh yeah, No, I've seen both. And people on the oh, show yeah. even have, I mean, there was that whole thing where it's like, you know, no AI is their profile and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Having trained those models on living artists work without compensating them mm -hmm. is definitely a problem. Yes. Uh, but, but also like th there is a difference, like it, in terms of what people say, the AI is collaging or just duplicating images. It actually is generating a new image every time, even if it does get it looking very much like some other source image. Because mm -hmm. it starts, if you watch the process, it starts from from noise, from static, and sort of builds the, the image out of there and kind of makes each part look, look more like what it has been trained on. Um, so there, there's a subtle distinction there, because it actually is creating original art, even if it's doing it having learned from some other artist, which is in a way also what people do yeah because you look at you look at art and you you're like oh i want to make something like that and or you you know you draw from a photograph you know you mm -hmm. uh oh yeah i no mean like says, sitting in a no museum and drawing art. Art. yeah like drawing the paintings that you see in museums which is something that people do um yeah that technically you're stealing something i suppose i mean you know technically it's I mean, I mean there's, there's a whole there's a, gray area there. I, you yeah. know, it's there's a lot of arguments to be had about, you know, intellectual property and, and, of and that kind of thing. Uh, but in terms of I, I tend to think of it in a broader historical perspective where it's like when photography first came along, uh, the painters were like, that's not art. Right. You know, that's you, you guys are cheating. That kind of, it's the same reaction or when when artists, uh, musical artists started to sample other artists mm -hmm. and use, it's it's the same kind of argument. It's just the, it's just the next level of that. Yeah. And uh, the thing that surprised me about it, because I, I mean, I didn't go into this with the expectation that I was even going to be, do, that I was going to spend this much time on it at all. Like at first, as right. I said, I was just. No, it sparked an it, idea. fun with it. Yeah. And, but I was very inspired by it. Because it really felt like, at least for the first two months, that I was collaborating with the AI. Like it mm -hmm. was giving me ideas and I would kind of go in its direction. So I realized I had to sort of stay loose. It was different from creating on my own where I get to decide everything. Yeah. It was it was like, oh, I see what you're trying to do. And 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 it really felt like there was a back and forth. Like it was uh like it was disturbingly like working with another person, even though I know yeah. that they're not, you know, it's not thinking on its end, but it would do, it would do strange things. Sometimes it freaked me out. Like one time it, it generated a lamp uh, on a desk that looks almost exactly like a lamp that's on my desk. right here. <laughs> <laughs> well, now you're getting to the other How side of why people that? don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's trying to go, okay, how are we, how am I going to take over this person's world? <laughs> figuring and plotting uh, uh, here's something that you made me think of too while you said you were collaborating with it i'm i was assuming that while you're working on it you're working on it uh on your laptop or whatever you're using but no you're probably doing it on a server right is it actually generating and working on a server like is it something you download and work locally or is it actually something that you're working on? Cause you said you were using servers from discord to access different things. So yeah, yeah. The, the generations in all these cases, cause I can't run stable diffusion locally because I have, I have a MacBook, but it's one generation before the ones that are capable of, okay. of running that stuff. So there is so, the possibility to run it locally. There's a possibility to run one, one of them locally, stable okay. diffusion, which is the one that I'm least familiar with in terms of I'm the the least competent of getting what I want out of that so far, because that's the one with the most options. Hmm. And they are really uh, kind of esoteric and, and just kind of a lot of acronyms that you don't know what they mean or indicate, whereas Dolly has no options. It's just the square and the generate button. Oh, really? <laughs> so, Okay. Yeah, it's just you cannot you do well you type in your prompt. I mean that's what, but okay. but there's no like even even mid journey and stable fusion they have parameters like you can put in negative prompts things you don't want or in mid journey you could say aspect ratio or you know 
work off of this image, you know, make take the outlines from this image, whatever. You, you have a lot of options for how you can work. And Dolly has not concerned itself with that at all. They hmm. just they just put it up and kind of left it there. And there's, there's supposedly a new version coming out in a couple of months, which I'm looking forward to. But I, I think because that OpenAI also made chat GPT. Okay. And that kind of has exploded for uh, bigger than Dali did. And since since Stable Diffusion and Midjourney are are sort of winning that the AI art war, I think Dali kind of uh, fell by the wayside. And and for <laughs> for me, uh, around November of last year, it changed. And this I'm still trying to figure out what happened here. Like as I, I was saying before, like the. Uh, the collaboration and, and the thing like I worked for two months, I made uh, 50 images like one after another at first and maybe like five of them that didn't work out. And I'm like 10% failure rate. I can live with that. Right. Uh, <laughs> and then once it hit November, it like flipped around and I had maybe five good ones and 50, 50 that didn't work. Oh. And I'm like, what happened? It's like, I didn't, I didn't change my, my method at all. So it kind of adapted to your method is what you're thinking Uh, or I have, I still don't know. I don't know. I mean, I've even gone as far as to wonder if I was personally targeted, like if they, if they turned it off for me or something like that. (laughs) And I, (laughs) because they never, I I don't know. I mean, there's a lot of people using it. I have no idea. Uh, And I tried to contact their support and it's, it's a very difficult question to answer because you're, you know, it's, it's, I've generated over 30,000 images on it. And because uh, each each girl takes like, say, one to 500 images to hmm. uh, of generation to to end up with one final image for me. Oh, uh, actually, I'm sorry. This reminds me of something you said earlier. Now, sometimes you said you can't generate something or it won't generate things and you will have to sometimes use a point of reference. And I wondered, how are you doing that with Dali if you said that you can only put in prompts? Is there... A way that oh, you yeah. can use a reference? Well, I didn't I didn't answer your previous question about like, yeah, so all these things are being generated on a server, but with with Dali, and you can see in the speed painting videos, this is what I do. Like they they get generated on the server, but I will download them and put them in Photoshop. So it's a constant back and forth oh. of file swapping. Really? Um yeah. Huh. So I will like I'll work on them in Photoshop and then I'll put the whatever I changed back into Dali to get more of it download the new version, go bring it into Photoshop. Now, see, that's right there. That's pretty innovative. <laughs> did you just think of that or did, did you learn that that's, or did you hear about that somewhere? Like I wouldn't have thought no, to do that. I mean, this process, the the weird thing about it is the, the process, I could describe it to you in, in great detail. It's a little different for, for everything, depending on the circumstances, but, but it came about organically. Like I just settled into this way of working because it made sense. Mm-hmm. And even the kind of way that the way that I zoom out and the kind of the adaptation to the 1024 square and how that plays in everything, like all of that is like very solid on my end in terms of how to keep things organized and, and not get overwhelmed with with files that I'm not going to use and, and that kind of thing. Or to, yeah. and to keep track of what I did. Uh, so if I need to do it again or undo it, I can I can still do that. Okay. Well, and speaking of the files and what you're going to use, so what are you going to use them for? Now you're making these things uh, and you just started doing it. Like you said, there was no plan, but now that you are making them and you're continue to making them, uh, continue to make them, are you, what are you going to do with them? Let's, I know you're posting That's them it. on the new, inter, uh, your new Instagram yeah. account, but like, and, you know, like, <laughs> so what's the, what's the plan here now? You're able to do it. Now, what do you do with it? Yeah, that's a that's a good question because I started putting them on other sites as well. They're on they're on DeviantArt and ArtStation, okay, and uh, and on Tumblr as well. They actually went on Tumblr first, but they were getting no love on Tumblr, so I moved them to Instagram. Well, Tumblr's been kind of weird uh, the past few years, yeah, you know. Like yeah, everybody's sure. kind of a ship. <laughs> I I started I started doing and in the in the beginning I was like I just gave each one of them a name because that was honestly the easiest way to keep track of them rather than to say you know, girl with red hair sitting in a wheelchair or whatever, like in terms right. of file names and just, just brevity, I was like, all right, everybody gets a name. And once they had a name, I started to think, well, what are they doing? So I would, when the images were done, I would start, I would come up with some caption or whatever. And these gradually became longer 
so they're like now kind of maximal paragraphs, the biggest you could fit in a in an Instagram comment. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, and they and they sort of overarching mythology began to develop because they're all wearing this black ring, and uh, <laughs> so oh. I started to think like, what is that ring, or what is it? You know, how do they get it? You know, and uh, I don't know. I just it, it, as as I keep working on it, like more ideas were coming to me. So I was like, oh, maybe I can make this into some kind of. Uh, you know, graphic novel or whatever, because people okay. are doing that, you know, making graphic novel in 24 hours. The problem is that uh, in order to do that, you'd have a character that repeats. I have to be able to use the same face mm -hmm. in multiple images, which is not something that it does by default. Um, you have to go through a bunch of uh, hoops, basically, to get it to generate the same face again. Okay. And I have actually, I spent like a while experimenting with that and I did succeed in doing it, but it wouldn't succeed for every face that I have. Cause it, it's like the first face has to be sort of ideal and lit right. And, and, you know, facing forward and unobscured and, and then you have to basically pretend, well, you, you do a, a I, I watched this, uh, channel on youtube called prompt muse and uh, mm -hmm. uh she showed me how to do it where uh you use this spline script or whatever and and you take the the other face and put it on a video of your own face moving around and so it will move the other face around then you take still shots from that and make new images out of them to train another AI model on. <laughs> See, that just sounds like the opening montage of a sci-fi flick where they're building <laughs> some sort of thing that's supposed to come kill Sarah Connor. You know? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, the thing is that it's not, it's not that difficult. It sounds crazy, but it was also just a matter of being patient and, and going for it. Yeah. Whereas, and, and you know that the technology only gets better and better with time more accessible easier to use okay and that's happening really fast in this case if you're if you're interested in this stuff at all then the news about what is coming out and 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 the advancements in each of these things is pretty astounding since last year uh we've already had mid journeys had two major version upgrades since then uh adobe has now got this thing called firefly where they're integrating the ai into into their creative suite okay. uh, uh, where they say they've trained it on their own stock image library. So it has provenance and they're not going to be pissing off any artists hmm. on right. that front. Uh, but, yeah. It's, so you're, so you are actively trying to work up to creating this graphic novel or that was just an idea. That was, that was an idea. It just, it was, it became apparent to me that it was so, it would be so much work to create those characters. Well, I, and have, obviously I'm not going to, there's like 60 different characters at this point were I to take that right. to the extreme. Yeah, it's not just and one I, character in a graphic <laughs> no, I mean, you could do that, but it's not going to be as fun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I've been more, honestly, I've been more uh, concerned lately with just getting back to the workflow that I started with, where I was, where I was cranking them out quickly. Uh. Because okay. uh, and that's why I've been I've been experimenting more with uh, Mid Journey and Stable Diffusion lately, uh, because the quality of what Dali has been putting out has been uh, insufficient for my increasing standards. Right. <laughs> because I because it was good at making photorealistic stuff in the beginning, and now it seems to really shy away from that. Or even if I I start with something photorealistic, it it doesn't maintain the photorealism for very long. And uh, it just, I, I don't, again, I don't know what happened. I mean, if it's, if it's just my opinion that changed, uh, but I'm still, I'm trying to, you know, increase the quality of what I'm doing while still having that same workflow. Because I, I mean, a lot of this is, uh, you know, people who have no, or haven't made art before, mm -hmm. uh, or didn't consider themselves to have any artistic uh, ability are now finding this very easy way to make their ideas uh, manifest, which is fantastic. I mean, that's yeah. more artists, more art, great. Uh, but I do like to spend time working on them. And uh, so the one and done nature of like Mid Journey is less appealing to me. Although I will make a lot of elements in Mid Journey and Photoshop them into my stuff if, uh, if necessary. Okay. <laughs> well, then let me ask you one more thing. Uh, with this plan, 
and you trying the different things and working on doing the workflow. So do you have something that you're like an upcoming project or an end game for something that you do want to do? Like what's one thing that you hope to do in the future with this? Uh, yeah, again, I have, I have no idea. I mean, no? I just, I okay. still it. feeling it out. Oh, you're saying, okay. yeah, I'm still, I'm still exploring it and just kind of, I was, I was honestly just so overjoyed that I could publish new original something yeah. every day for, for a few months. Like I've never been able to do that before. And the, the internet and the, the algorithms kind of demand that kind of thing. <laughs> People want their, their bite-sized thing and they want, you know, I tend to work on bigger projects that take forever to finish. And then once they drop, it's like thud and <laughs> they're gone, <laughs> you know, I yes. mean, they'll be appreciated for a second, but they're, they're, they're already in the past. So to be able to, to have a daily feed was, was very satisfying for me and to have like a few weeks of, of images stacked up ahead of time. So I just wanted to get back there. Like that's, that's what I've been trying to do lately. It's a valid point. I get that. It's yeah. the, still the satisfaction of making. And it's the reason why we're still going to do it, even if we're not getting paid to do it, but it would be nice. Yeah. I would, <laughs> I would love to get paid to do this. And I put, I put myself on Fiverr to, you know, make this kind of stuff for other people. Oh, I didn't even think but of that. There's only okay. around 12,000 other listings on there. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. I get, I get, again, you're in the LA of, of putting yourself <laughs> like AI generated no, art on the internet. Let's see. Can I find someone? A way to monetize <laughs> this and to, and, you know, the, there are sites that sell you prompts uh, if you right. want to, you know, if you can't think of the prompt yourself, I love you it. They need, it. they need AI for AI, for AI generated. Prompts. Yeah, no, there's other people training chat GPT to write their prompts for them. Uh, that it's, is, it's an insane amazing. landscape. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, I don't know. Traditionally, I'm less interested in, uh, like the marketing aspect. I'm, I'm kind right. of terrible at, at self-promotion in general. Like this is probably the most effective one that i've done yet <laughs> well thank you <laughs> I, yeah it's uh it's uh it's just it's i i like i like the process i like making stuff and 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 or you know performing stuff all right uh so yeah the the trying to get people to pay attention to it is less my uh, forte <laughs> all right and for people to check out your stuff where would you tell them to go see some of your work uh, well, if you look for Billy Z Duke, uh, in human touch and or wrong windows, you will find me because I, uh, I have saturated wrong windows is definitely everywhere. Cause when, when that album came out, I spent a good week kind of, uh, making sure that, you know, we actually show up when you look for us, <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, and in human touch is newer, but it's, it's around, you know, it's, uh, Instagram. Uh, art station, DeviantArt. Okay. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for talking with me today. I'm glad we finally got together. Thanks right. for thanks for having me. Mm -hmm.